Oh, where's that phone call? There we go. All right. We, right we can't start without Ben. Yeah. There yeah. he is. Yeah, get Ben here. Dear Ben, this month is dedicated to you, buddy. <laughs> Reserve seating starts now. <laughs> <laughs> It's well, Affleck welcome. Month. Welcome, yeah. everybody, to Affleck Month. Um, I just got to say, before we get started, this is my favorite time of the year at, at this movie. Because Affleck it's month? like, well, not just Affleck Month, but there's the holiday show coming up. We've got like our own little kind of routine now for December, like where we know, like, there, there's these episodes that really worked and were really fun, and we got all those coming up. And how 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 do you come off of a great scary movie month? Do you have Ben Affleck month? You probably over the years have had like a picture of what Reindeer Games is in your head. Was it what you thought it would be, or did you like it more or less than you thought that you would? It was. I remember. I remember the poster. I remember Charlize being involved. Mm -hmm. um, but I had a lot of fun with this one. I didn't know it was Frankenheimer until I started watching it. I think this is the only Frankenheimer I've ever seen. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Baby Island of Dr. Moreau remake? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Okay. I've seen I'm pretty most... bad with Frankenheimer, yeah. You've seen most Frankenheimers. I mean, I mean, and he has his, his house style, you know? Like, I mean, he made, you know, Ranger Games was interesting to watch because it was, it was very much along the lines of, like, a lot of his 60s and 70s, like, kind of, like, thrillers, but made with that early 2000s sheen which is really funny because we're in crispy hair affleck territory with this one um and we're also in charlise territory where she's kind of coming out of her initial like like bombshell actress phase like where they're she's figuring out what she can do they're figuring out what she can do and this movie plays her straight not to maybe maybe not to give the movie away for folks who haven't seen ranger games um but there's sort of some 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 bait and switch cat and mouse stuff going on and the way they present Charlize at first i was watching the movie and i'm like oh you know she's kind of doing her you know early career like i'm just blonde and beautiful thing and then the movie kind of twists a little bit and i'm like oh, okay good like she knows you know she kind of knew what she was doing there. And I'm glad that Frankenheimer gave her the opportunity to play this kind of character, more of a, not spoiling anything, but more of a femme fatale type character. Um, and uh, Sinise in the pocket, like, right, this is like, this is like, I guess maybe the end of movie star Gary Sinise. Gary Scarenies. Gary Scarenies. <laughs> Gary Scary. Um, yeah, this was interesting because he, I mean, he did stuff for a while. He was like, I think he kind of came on the radar of most people like with either of Mice and Men or Forrest Gump. Yeah. But then he kind of became Tom Hanks' sidekick yeah. for a little while. That's how I always knew him growing up was like. Yeah. With he was the Rob Schneider to Tom Hanks' as Adam Sandler for a while. Yeah. And then he popped up in a cameo in like the Green Mile and everything. But but, but they they were tapping into something i'm surprised they never really did before which is that he's a very sinister looking guy exactly the word you, i was gonna use yeah if you want him to be yeah. and i uh i mean he's my beloved ransom he's jimmy shaker yeah. corrupt cop that was secret villain this one's straight up villain this one is like, they've got it's kind of like a nesting doll of villains that we have <laughs> in this one which i kind of enjoyed like along came a spider did this where it's like Michael Wincott's your villain. I'm like, well, that's pretty obvious. But then, like, it's a nesting doll. There's like, oh, a Billy Burke villain and a Monica Potter villain, and like, Reindeer this Games one, plays the same game. This one was cool because he's like, everybody's playing it straight at first, and then, as you said, the nesting doll kind of comes undone, and and you get layers upon layers. And yeah, Sinise is it's so funny too because one of my favorite movies growing up was Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen Apollo 13 150 thousand times. It's one of my all time favorite movies, um, and. Uh, it's, it's amazing how well Sinise can play nobility, you yeah. know, and just an earnestness and integrity. But then something like this, or even the back half of Forrest Gump, where he's playing like greasy cynic, you know, like is, yeah. he's, he's equally good at that because he does have, you know, he's thinking about um, Buscemi too, 
where, yeah. where they can they do similar things where Steve Buscemi can play the most earnest, like, you know, the most integrity, the most wholesome. But then, you know, and he kind of does both on The Sopranos, too, you know, where he's kind of got both sides. So Sinise is very similar, not just not just in their like appearance and sort of that, you know, kind of like the stringy white guy, you know, with that, that kind of thing, but more just like just their general affect like is really similar i think and can be played for both sides really well and that lends itself really well to, well well to a guy like frankenheimer who's you know one of the one of the things i'll i would sort of ding reindeer games on is not anybody's fault which is mm -hmm. he's making a 70s crime thriller in this glossy early 2000s age where a lead, your leading man is affleck and mm -hmm. affleck's not affleck's not ready for this like Affleck's not really ready for this role yet in the way that he's delivering things and he's talking about like doing time and all that and he's still that doesn't really click as much because he doesn't have like the gravitas of the town yet exactly he he's not so I mean like he's not this Affleck is not ready but, for that yet yeah it's like what if AJ from uh Armageddon went to jail yeah. and it's like you don't really believe it it's yeah. like he could get out of it <laughs> like he can do he can do chucky in you know yeah. in google hunting because that's so much more his like but when he's trying to do like hard scrabble crim like he's not danny ocean you know what i mean like he can't no. do he can't he's very do enjoyable in the movie though in yes. a way like if, if you if you accept the miscasting exactly then he has fun and he is in the spirit of the movie which is like it's trash but like he's playing it like like i want some goddamn hot chocolate and exactly. a piece of and pecan pecan pie. Pie. yeah i mean yeah. like that that seems like so funny and he's another thing i appreciate about the movie is just that it has this murderer's row of supporting actors it's ridiculous yeah with like clarence williams the third and my favorite thing about clarence williams is the third is like Everything's a whisper until it's a scream. Until it's a scream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you got Donald Logue and you got Danny Trejo to burn and you got Dennis Farina popping up in the third act. So, so I was watching the movie and I'm like, I'm laying on my couch and I watched it like with a bunch of other stuff and I'm like laying on my couch and I'm watching it. And, and Farina is introduced in voiceover before you see him. Yeah. And, and I like, I'm like watching the movie, I'm kind of spaced out and then I hear his voice. I'm like, is that Dennis Farina? Like, is that is that? And then it, and it cuts to him in the in the casino manager's office. I'm like, it's Dennis Farina. Like, I'm just so excited to see him. Just, yeah. just, just how can you not be? It's Dennis Farina. This would be like a great second movie on a Conier double. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very much so. Like, murder, kind of trashy murderers row of like character actors kind of movie. Yeah, because it's a dimension, but it totally feels like a Hollywood Pictures movie. Yo, totally, totally, totally. Yeah. This is that. This is that thing where like it's hard to talk about now, obviously, given the yeah. context. But like when you see that dimension logo come up, and like you just think of like Affleck as the kid, you know, and like being like, oh yeah, I did a movie for Bob, you know, like he's got me in this movie, you know, like the way they used to talk about Miramax back in the day. <laughs> I just really have a good time watching this movie and I do progressively more and more every time I see it. This is maybe like the fourth or fifth time I've seen it. And I did a two, one of the first 2K replays about it and I went mm -hmm. back and read what I wrote and I liked it even more this time than I did last time. Um, and it was also funny to read like the different categories that I've cut over the years from 2K <laughs> yeah. where I'm like, this is too hard. So I, I had like best food best like onset yeah. story stuff like that i will recall the best onset story though because um there's a quote on the imdb trivia for reindeer games where clarence williams the third um said um ben and his lady gwyneth were on set the and lady gwyneth. Them, yeah and his lady gwyneth he's like and i looked at them and they were so beautiful it was as if i was looking at royalty <laughs> <laughs> and i just think it's so funny because I just think that Clarence Williams III is not a man to be impressed by Ben Affleck and <laughs> <laughs> but he was like gobsmacked by them. I just think that's so great. They were they were they were good looking people. I think this makes such a good like pairing. Like you mentioned Con Air before. Like and this is like the kind of movie where like it slots in so well with like a marathon. You know what I mean? Because it's like oh yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's the kind of movie where it's not like it's not it's not it doesn't sit heavy in your stomach you know what no. i mean it's something you can watch very passively like i was i was thinking of a simple plan 
where I'm like, mm-hmm. Simple Plan is a movie that like it's a similar plot and it like sits heavy in your stomach, like when you're done watching that movie. Like you have to sit and lay down and think about the world. This one passes through you like a nice piece of pecan pie. And I was like, Yeah, this is this would make a, like a second or third or fourth in a marathon, you know, like I can imagine like you or Patrick programming this as a double feature or something like that. Um, so yeah, no, it's very good. But what are what are some other holiday movies that you're planning on watching? Uh well I'll I'll just name off the two that I've never seen that I finally want to check off the list because a lot of it is just the standards that like I go to every year like Home Alone and Die Hard and It's a Wonderful Life um but the two that I haven't seen that I need to get to is The Apartments which I think is more like a New Year's Eve movie yeah okay that's a and new- then um I've never seen On Her Majesty's Secret Service and that's supposed to be like the Christmas Bond so let me tell you I I should say there is Christmas in in um the apartment okay but it is but it, it's a chris it's that week that week before christmas and new year's that's a yeah. great time to watch the apartment the apartment's one of my favorite movies i love that movie and then on majesty secret service definitely definitely a um a winter time bond movie uh yeah that, i'm excited for you to see that that's a that's a good one i like that one a lot um i got on a funny just kind of like goofy tangent with patrick while i was watching reindeer games and we started to paraphrase if martin source scorsese was talking about reindeer games <laughs> so patrick says it's a really good picture frankenheimer recalls ozu <laughs> and i said and gary sinise is a brute but he looks like jesus on the cross his caper is a temptation a pilgrimage of the soul <laughs> i think affleck could play either the damon part or the dicaprio part in the departed see i want to see him play the mark Wahlberg part I was going to say this maybe later in the series, but I'm just so proud of him. I'm just so happy for Ben Affleck because he's like, was through the ringer. He was always like appealing, but you were kind of like, is he my douchey friend or is he really talented? But, and then he got put through the ringer and he came back like born again. Amazing. I just love, and I've said this on Twitter and I've said this in articles and stuff like that, but Affleck, Affleck was always, cause my, the Kevin Smith connection, like Affleck was always my guy when I was young. Like I always thought, and like, and to be fair, like, not in not because of his acting not because he i thought he was a great thespian you know what i mean he always had a degree of like there was an artificiality about a lot of his early performances he always looked like he was posturing he always looked like he was trying to impress you you know and like even and even with 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 reindeer games there's parts of it where as we said like he's kind of miscast at this point in his career he doesn't he doesn't have the gravitas for the eat this yet he's kind of trying to fake a world weariness especially in the narration that he's not really ready for yet but like he's the but he was a star of the moment it made sense why they cast him like all that stuff i can see him wanting to do the movie but he the the thing about you know what you said was like both things are true he was your douchey friend you know what i mean yeah. like he was like he went through his addiction period he went through his period with you know with 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 substances and with the, all the things that are his business and nobody else's but like obviously they came out in the in in, in popular culture and they now, now he's coming out of that as you said like and he's you know gray in the beard now and he's and he's he smiles when he talks about his kids and like thinking about the thing like the things that he did wrong and his marriage and all that that's just so much of like i just connect so much with that like i connect so much with his like just that redemption arc is just so good i just yeah he has like an innate people's champ quality to him exactly. like even like at the end of reindeer games they sort of tap into that where it's like he's leaving the stolen money in people's mailboxes and stuff like that and it's just like yeah, it, it, he's he's that guy. He's the guy like where even if you like aren't completely sold on him, he's going to win you over. Like you're going to begrudgingly get there. I have a question for our audience to wrap up. Um I've never seen the director's cut of Reindeer Games. I've almost watched it the past two times. I just go back to the theatrical. Should we watch the the director's cut of Reindeer Games? It's like 20 minutes longer. Is it just as good or better? So please let us know. Please let us know. And Adam, let us know what we're watching next week. I want to watch Argo. Argo. Fuck myself. (laughs) Ben's Magic Hour movie. Well, not Magic Hour. That's not what that means. Um, thank you everybody for joining us for the first Affleck episode Um, this was a blast thank you Rob and uh, we will be back next week talking about Argo so until next time these seats are fucking reserved kid bye everyone